some statistics for you to keep in mind. You know, whenever I, whenever I look at these statistics, I kind of think of the guy in those radio commercials who does the legal stuff in the last five seconds, let's say the car sales people or whatever it is, either before or after, and they're talking a mile a minute. It's sort of like a deeper version of Alvin and the Chipmunks or something. <laughs> you know, right through real quick, right? First of all, it's important to keep in mind that if a child doesn't write information down, the likelihood is they will forget it. Most information, if it's really dramatic and if it's really um, engaging, maybe not. For example, everyone here, pretty much, I would think, can tell me where they were on 9-11. They may or may not be able to tell me what they were wearing. They may or may not be able to tell, but they could tell me where you were standing, and oh, at least when you heard the news. You perhaps can tell me your first reaction or your first action once you heard the news. Okay, I remember I was here in this building. I was right upstairs on top of this first staircase. And I met Mr. Harris in the hallway, and he told me they blew up the, 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 the World Trade Center. And I'm like, you're kidding, right? And he told me, no. And we went straight downstairs to the gym, and they had NPR playing, talking about, and actually had somebody, believe it or not, in one of the towers being interviewed, because nobody anticipated that the tower itself would come crashing down. I don't think that person survived, because the time frame was such, I can't imagine that person got out. But it's just unbelievable, right? You remember that. For those of us in the room a little bit older, you may have that similar experience with the assassination of JFK, or maybe some other life-altering moments when the White Sox won the World Series. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Cubs fans, please forgive me. I, I root for neither, so I have no, stick, no skin in that game. Um, so sometimes the episode alone will, will hold on to the content for it. It's called episodic memory. It's actually the deepest kind of memory you can have, which is why you might remember experiences from your youth many, many years ago, right? Because it has a different pathway. And sometimes information keeps getting recorded over and over and over on top of previous information, so it blurs in our mind, right? It's like imagine trying to remember two phone numbers. First try to imagine remembering one in its entirety. The more you can cluster, the better off you are. But then try to remember a second phone number. It basically deletes the first phone number out of your brain because you can't hold on to so much information. So a lot of it has to do with how we hold on to it. If you don't write it down, expect 80% to disappear in rapid fashion, right off the bat. Okay? Now keep in mind that we want students to take notes of what we said. Let's think about the pace of that process for a moment. We can hear, and this is where those commercials come in, about six to eight hundred words per minute intelligently. I don't know what that means exactly, but apparently so. I'm not even talking about those um, subliminal messages where apparently when my parents were younger, they used to, in the, in the movies, they would insert like pictures of Coca-Cola or something, they say, in order to get people subliminally thirsty so that during the inter intermission, you'd go out and buy yourself a Coke. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about just, if I were to, I'm not speaking slowly, but if I really picked it up a notch, if I really ratcheted up my speed tremendously, you probably could still hear and process most of what I have to say. However, your students, when it comes to writing, can only record about 30 words a minute, assuming their arms are not tired. Most of us, by the way, speak only at the 100 to 175 word a minute range. So when you think about the imbalance or the disadvantage between the teacher and the student, again, I'm assuming, this, this assumes you're just rattling off information. Most of us don't really do that. I get that. But just think about how much, if you're, especially if you're rushing, because you have five minutes left in class and you have to complete this entire thing, what is the imbalance as it relates to your student's ability to record it? 